Yes, thank you, Gary. Thank you to your team. I'm quite aware that you also put a lot of work into this and I'm happy that we all meet here. I'm with you, Sandrine, in understanding that the circumstances, um, particularly in Europe, but also in some other countries, are getting more complicated under the current conditions. And um, so I think we, we just need to be aware of that. Uh, nevertheless, I do think the deliberations that we would like to do today are extremely important in the in the introduction, it says that we know quite a lot about the what needs to change from reducing climate emissions to keeping the planetary boundaries to, uh, to going for resource efficiency to looking at a healthy planet, etc. There's a lot known about the, the, the what, although many more people need to be convinced about the what. But there is not so much known about the how and the process of getting people in a, yeah, in, in a way that change is being led at, at, at many, many different levels, um, kind of a, around a, a, a joint orientation towards a, a different kind of future. Oh, yeah. so, uh, what I think is important is to, uh, number one, uh, be aware that we are not the only ones talking about processes of transformations. There is transition research. There, there are lots of transformation research. Also, a, a lot of members from from us and, and the Club of Rome are involved in. Uh, but um, I think today we have a, a chance for a kind of reflective piece on how transformations went in the past and what we see in current transformations happening. So the, the, the issue about, um, as, an, as a kind of, kind of conceptual introduction that I would like to give, is let us uh, let, let, uh, remind ourselves of the fact that transformations aren't just kind of the, the next little thing that we achieve between here and there. Uh, transma uh, transformations, particularly systems transformations, refer to a very deep change in the underlying structure of what informs societal behavior. And I think that is something uh, that is extremely important to keep in mind. And uh, the, the issue is that, um, at least in, in, in my experience of the, you know, kind of the work that I've, I've done internationally, is that we have a slight tendency to all um, work with what I call implicit theories of change. Those of you who are in project management are probably familiar with the term theory of change. So you, you, you know what you do based on certain assumptions and then you construct a strategy uh, that is called the theory of change. But we often work according to more implicit theories of change. This means that we, that we are used to do certain things like convincing politicians, convincing decision makers, or um, supporting innovation, or um, kind of driving regulations and laws, etc. There are different ways of, of bringing about transformative change. And um, my intention is with the, with the stepping stone of today is that we look into becoming more conscious about what our theories of change are, and what are the theories of change that we actually need to put behind the strategies that you have in kind of the, the WASP project on 21st century leadership or the, the, the Club of Rome projects on a new emerging civilization on uh, the planetary emergency plan or on changing the economic systems. So that we step out of our kind of slightly isolated, you know, kind of corners, you know, where we are familiar, where we have our expertise, and, and step out and say, and, and, and look at, and if we look from a distance, how have transformations happened and what can we learn from them? And now the most important thing for me of today is what can we learn from these past and present transformations in becoming much more conscious about our effectiveness in helping to organize helping to lead transformative change. And one thing that has become quite clear from, from my work, and I've been working in, uh, you can say, medium scale transformation processes, like changing the Egyptian um, educational, technical education system or introducing a global mainstream sustainability, sustainability coffee standard, or looking at um, kind of helping people to, to manage a huge biosphere reserve, et cetera, you know, just to name a few examples. So I'm, I, I, was, I, I am still kind of busy 
uh, looking at, at societal change mechanisms with multiple stakeholders and how these work and what are the conditions or the processes you have to underpin for, for this to happen. And one of the insights that um, I would like to bring in today is, is that uh, what has come out so clearly is that we tend to have a very technical approach to transformations you know, because we are also knowledgeable about certain issues. But the end, end question is, it's all about human agency. Human agency brought us into the mess that we are in, and human agency can get us out of the mess, <laughs> hopefully. You know, this is, uh, this is something we, we may uh, need to see. So it is all about uh, the psychologists, and I am a psychologist uh, or a social psychologist, would, uh, would talk about self-efficacy. But in a way, it is much more than that. It's not self-efficacy just about me, but it is a collective efficacy, you know, kind of a collective effectiveness that we need to learn and that we need to, to understand in terms of being able to catalyze strategies for transformative change that are to be, I can't, to be careful, you know, at least more effective than what we have been doing in the past 20, 30, 40, or 50 years. So with that, I would like to open the discussion and um, look at uh, today's flow of the program in looking into, into gaining insights from past transformations and gaining insight, insights from what we see as existing transformations happening, and then take the learnings until you know the later later today thank you